Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Derek Elliott from Dirk.com, and today we have my face, and uh, hopefully a lot of days in the future as well, as long as you guys don't leave horrible comments about my appearance. Um, but as long as you don't, there should be some more of this in the future. So I posted an Instagram video the other day, which I'll put, oh gosh darn it, I'm getting, I'm, get, I'm new to the webcam thing, so I don't really know where to point, so there's going to be a video somewhere on the screen that's going to show you that post. Um, and with that post, I made a little time lapse of me making it. It only took about 15 minutes. And um, I was curious if people would want to see that same time lapse slowed down a little more with some explanation about what's actually going on. So that's what you're seeing here today. Um, the post kind of happened because it was getting towards the end of the day. I was like, man, I haven't made anything. I was kind of feeling down in the dumps about it. And I was like, let's just see what I can whip together in like 15 minutes. So turned on the screen recorder, started making it. I had a little bit of an idea of what I wanted to do first. But yeah, just kind of started making. And uh, I encourage you guys to do stuff like that. Just kind of play around and blunder sometimes. Sometimes you get cool stuff out of it. So yeah, we're going to watch that same time lapse that you saw in the Instagram post in three times speed and of course it's going to be accompanied by an explanation by yours truly Derek Elliott so let's go ahead and press play and start watching this thing so first thing I'm doing is switching into the sculpting workspace which is gonna um, give you some nice presettings and you know get you in a nice matte cap here and um, I really don't know what I'm doing when it comes to sculpting so we're just gonna kind of hang out here for a minute while I uh, while I do my sculpting thing. One thing I can tell you though is that in the top right corner, I'm pointing to it right now. If, if you can see where I'm pointing, um, Dynatopo. You want to turn that on. What that does is basically add geometry to your mesh, kind of as you go. At least that's how I understand it. And that just makes it so you can sculpt a little more freely. You don't have to worry about the underlying base mesh base mesh quite so much. So yeah. Um, if you're new to sculpting, don't watch this tutorial. Just push all the sculpting buttons and stuff. And so yeah, I ended up with kind of a funky looking mesh there. So what I wanted to do to kind of smooth that out was use a remesh modifier. And that just gives you some more even quads, kind of got rid of some of those overlapping vertices. And then the next thing I did was just add a subdivision surface modifier to give myself a little bit smoother mesh so that those reflections would be, you know, nice and smooth. And, um, and so there's a little more geometry going on there. Then just setting up my workspace a little bit, um, making it a square camera size for Instagram. Yeah, remember that square, Instagram, square, Instagram. This is top, top level knowledge you're getting today. So yeah, got the square. Next thing was an HDRI. This is really important. Anytime you've got a lot of reflections in your objects, you want to have an HDRI that not only gives you some lighting, but most importantly gives you those reflections. So once I had that set up, I wanted to go ahead and start kind of working with this ice material. And you can pause the video if you need to, but basically just turning the transmission all the way up and the roughness kind of down on that principal shader. And that's giving you a, a pretty nice effect. And then you may have noticed over in my render tab, I did turn up some of the light bounces a little bit just so that we get some nice, uh, you know, nice light bouncing. So here's the part where I was like, oh, Derek, you should use a font that's not the same font you freaking always use. And I was like, no, I'll do, I'll do the same one. And then I was like, well, maybe I'll try something else. So I tried something else. And then I was like, no. So Roboto, black, italic, old faithful. Can't get enough of it. Uh, you can use it if you want to, but uh, it's my font. It's actually a Google font. I don't know why I always say it's my font. It's just like, if everyone starts using it, then I'll have to stop. And I don't want to do that. So, so don't use it. So right now what I'm doing is just kind of moving things around, seeing what happens when I leave that ice in there. You know, are we getting some cool reflections? Am I getting the look I'm going for? And uh, yeah, this is the part where I was like, well, maybe let's uh, change the index refraction to something more realistic. But then I was like, I don't want to mess with that. Index refraction, by the way, is IOR on that principal shader. So this is where I'm just inserting some keyframes to rotate that cube on the z-axis, making sure it's got linear interpolation, and what that does is allow it to loop seamlessly, and that's what I'm checking right there is just to make sure that it does loop seamlessly. So I noticed a little bit of a kind of funky thing going on here. I was like, what happened to my mesh? Um, but 
it was just like a it's like a viewport glitch or something so went ahead and converted it to a mesh anyways don't really have to do that and now you know breaking new ground here i decided to use the color blue in association with ice um, never been done before so i did that i thought it looked pretty good i don't know where i came up with it and and yeah so the next thing i did here was just add this point lamp and that does two things what one thing it does is give you some nice reflections on the ice itself and kind of in the ice um, but then it also gives you this kind of nice gradient in the background which does not look good in other colors by the way you can change the color if you want but i, I loved it with white so thought everything was looking pretty good but i was like you know scale it up see how it looks always a good idea to kind of play around with your with your scene just you know there might be something you can change so once I got to this point, I was like, okay, let's just kind of add some final touches here, bumping up the render samples. And then I was like, oh, well, we definitely need depth of field. So over there in the camera tab with that selected, just kind of turning down the aperture size or turning up the aperture size. I can never remember. I always have to just kind of slide the thing around. And um, yeah, getting some nice depth of field on there. Don't use too much. It can be a little overpowering. I think I might have even used a little too much here. And then I um, went back to the ice material here just to kind of, uh, you know, play with that roughness a little bit, see if maybe there was something more that could be done. And uh, yeah, kind of ended up liking it just like that. Like I said, I did move into After Effects and add a few kind of color corrections and stuff like that. But you don't have to do that. Um, maybe someday I will do some tutorials on that, but I really don't know what I'm doing there either. So anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Just kind of a walkthrough of... How you can make something quick in Blender, I encourage you to, you know, next next day you feel like you haven't done anything, just jump in Blender for 10 minutes and render something. Like, just give yourself a time frame and, and do it. So, anyways, hope you guys like this video. If you did, leave a comment. I'm not going to stop doing my regular tutorials where I, you know, explain things in a little more depth. So, if you want to make sure you're seeing those, subscribe to the channel. Um, but yeah, let me know what you thought about this new format and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching.